<laughs> All right, everybody, we are live. Welcome to another episode of Carnivore Mastermind. We've got a super fun topic today. I'm really excited to talk with you guys about. And I was actually surprised how much interest, uh, maybe not surprised, but a little bit um, surprised about you know, how much interest there was in this topic. You guys left some great feedback and, you know, tips and things already in the post of the uh, poll of the week. So I want to start out by talking about that. And then we're going to introduce everybody here on our amazing panel of guests tonight. So we've got um, five amazing people there. You know, we're all carnivore or, you know, animal based. I think pretty much everyone's fully carnivore, right? At this point. And yep. so, um, but also, you know, we all have some sort of background or mindset of preparedness and, you know, ha putting value and putting importance on being prepared for emergencies mm -hmm. and trying to do the best to provide for our families in a, you know, nutrient dense, holistic, healthy way, even, you know, on a daily basis, but even during times of emergency or stress. And so that's kind of the topic for today. And we'll start with bringing up the poll of the week. So this is what I asked you guys. Do you have an emergency pantry where you put aside carnivore or ketovore friendly foods? And we had, it was kind of fun to watch this. It was kind of a race this week, um, but it's really a close tie between the first option and the third option. So 38% voted for, yes, I do put aside proper human diet friendly foods in case of emergency, followed by a close second at 36% uh, of you saying, I want to, but I just don't know where to start. And then third place was 20% saying, no, I've never really thought about doing this. And then we had 6% voting mm -hmm. for, don't really think it's that important. And we got lots of interesting comments too. A lot of you talking about what you do currently and, um, you know, the things that you put away and how how you go about doing that. So I appreciate everybody um, putting in their feedback there. And if you haven't, you know, checked out that post yet and you want to see some comments down there, you know, from others in the community, please check that out. Um, but since we have such a, a great panel, I'm going to kind of save my spiel for uh, the video, which I already uploaded. So I released a video this morning talking about my pantry and everything that I have stacked up so far and some of the things that I make. And so um, you can check that video out if you want to kind of hear my spiel, but I wanted to leave most of the time here for, for my guests to speak tonight. So um, we're going to start with Larry because you're the one that's got the least amount of time. And so we'll yeah. start with you. So, um, you know, what are your thoughts on preparedness in general and maybe how have your plans changed or your preps changed since you became carnivore? Yeah, preparedness in general. So I'm a retired soldier. In the Army, we have a saying that two is one and one is none. So always have twice as much of what you need because you have to be prepared for the unknown unknown, right? You're Just because you turn the tap on and water comes out today doesn't mean that's going to happen tomorrow. And you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. And if you're not prepared for that, it's a bad time to plan when you're thirsty and hungry and without shelter. So this is what you have to do. You have to plan in advance. So uh, my philosophy, I, I've been a prepper for a long time, so I have plenty of prepping stuff that is not carnivore. I still have MREs. I still have uh, some dehydrated food. And those are my grade C, you know, survival food that if I was starving, I would go to. If I was going to die, I would eat that. But I would never like bust one open just to, hey, let's check out how good. The... For one thing, MREs are terrible. And so is the dehydrated food. Don't let anyone tell you different. It's awful. It's just sustenance, right? Even when we were, when I was on the standard American diet, I loathed eating MREs. Everyone did. They were terrible for you. They, they, they block you up like you wouldn't believe, probably because they're filled with fiber. I mean, everyone gets constipated when you're eating those. Trust me. And it's not fun. So you don't want to eat those, but I have them because I'm not going to throw them out because they are survival food and I can go months and months uh, on, on that. The other thing I have is ammunition and firearms and the skill of how to use them. So I can kill rabbits. Mm -hmm, I can too. kill deer. I can kill if, if I was starving, I could kill cows if I had to, I could kill whatever I have to, to eat. Right. So I, and I can, I can skin an animal and, and, um, and prep it and, you know, dress it up. Right. So things I can do, um, with that, so it's good to have, if you have skill and have firearms, um, that's a good, a good skill set to have. Um, 
lastly, super easy. Where do you start if you're doing a carnivore? Because I do have carnivore food too. The easiest, lowest hanging fruit, I think, for carnivores to start would just be buying uh, spam, buying anchovies, or, or, you know, um, whatever, any kind of fish, canned fish, canned uh, tuna or whatever. This is all good uh, protein and fat that's super easy. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out, okay, I'm, and it's not great food. It doesn't taste awesome to live off that, but you could, right? Um, so sardines, fantastic. Get a bunch of sardines. Make sure they're in water, though, not oil. The, the oil they use to pack these in are terrible. So that's the easiest starting point. And then beyond that, you know, once you want to go really carnivore, like pemmican would be fantastic uh, to start adding into because that, that'll last quite a while. And you can buy it online. You don't have to buy the carnivore bars. You can buy pemmican online. Just Google it or, you know, you'll find people selling chunks of it that you could, that these, I forget the guy's name, one, one farmer does. And you can buy it with honey or I don't recommend that or fruit or just straight up yeah. with salt, which I recommend. So that's what I would recommend, kind of like, and then set tiers, you know, like, okay, if, if we lose the grid and we lose power and, you know, the grocery stores can't um, restock, because I don't know if people know this, but we are a just-in-time delivery system. So grocery stores, if you've been in an emergency like a hurricane, grocery stores will be empty in 72 hours, 100%. I don't care what you do, it, yep. you, you know, you can't count on groceries being at the grocery store. So, um that's a good thing. And then if, if I lived out in the country, I'd consider eggs, too. I'd consider chickens. But um, so that's kind of my my thoughts is just if you're just going to start out, get some canned fish. That's really easy way to start. Uh, and that is, you know, and, or canned meats as well. Potted meats, you know, in the in the um, the armies uh, starting the Napoleonic Wars, they used to eat canned meats, potted meats. And in the uh, in the American Army, we ate it all the way up till Vietnam, and then we switched over to MREs, and everyone got <laughs> even got sick. I mean, I, the canned meats are no taste good, but at least they're a good amount of animal fats in them and protein, so they're much healthier for you. I mean, we used to have healthier foods, even though it didn't taste great. But you can make your own just by doing like spam, you know, uh, Vienna sausages, whatever. Just get some variety. That'll keep you alive, and it's not as bad as standard American diet. Agreed, a hundred percent. Yeah, I think those are all all great tips, and and I think as a lot of us will probably echo in this conversation, just coming to that realization that our food system is fragile, and that you know when you go to the store, it looks like it's full of everything, but how quickly that can go away, and how desperate people would would be getting in a very short period of time if they had you know literally nothing nothing backed up. So. Um, can I add one Thank more you. thing? One more thing I would uh -huh. say. I've had soldiers come to me and ask how to eat MREs as carnivores. And I tell them to supplement their MREs, throw away all the candy, of, you know, throw away most MREs. Some MREs have a good protein to fat ratio and, and aren't vegetarian. But what you can do is you can add things like uh, to your diet too. Like uh, you can buy bags of powdered egg yolk. And that would be a great mm -hmm. uh, survival food too, to add that. So you can put that in with the potted meats. So just that's one other thing I tell soldiers all the time. So great. Thank you. And um, I forgot to mention every um, in case anyone watching today is not familiar with your all of your channels, um, yeah. please introduce yourself and uh, what your channel name is, even though it says it down there. But yeah, I'm carnivore soldier. I'm from Austin, Texas. And my focus is on the carnivore diet, but it's specifically geared towards uh, veterans and uh, first responders and mental health. Although anyone can really pick up tips on there because I kind of share the knowledge. And I think, you know, anyone can share carnivore. They're doing it successfully. And I've been carnivore for over a year now. This is my one year anniversary it was March 22nd. I've lost 50 pounds. I put on tons of muscle and my whole life changed. So my whole identity, everything changed. Excellent. Awesome. Well, I think um, you're in the middle now, so I don't know which direction to go, but I think we'll just scoot over to Carrie and then we'll go up and around. So awesome. Thanks, Thank you, Nia. I love this topic. Uh, and my name's Carrie. I'm doing the documentary Healing Humanity. I have a YouTube channel called Homestead How, and we've been homesteading, doing YouTube videos and homesteading for eight or nine years now. So um, 
part of homesteading is being prepared. And like Larry and Nia said, I totally agree. I think a lot of humanity takes things for granted. It's like, oh, we're always able to just go to the grocery store and get groceries. But if there ever were a disaster or something like that, I think people would start panicking pretty quickly and realize how much they took that luxury sort of for granted. So part of me becoming a homesteader, moving out to the country was being able to be more self-sufficient. And uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that that we try to do here. A lot of the stuff Larry mentioned, I'm on board with. I actually got a couple little things here that that we do in terms of like canned meat. This is Wild Planet is a company that they got some pretty decent stuff. This is Skipjack Wild Tuna. And one of the things that I like to look for is sustainably pole and line caught. And then when you're looking at the ingredients, if there's one, that's pretty darn good. And a lot of this stuff from Wild Planet, yeah. like like this one, for example, the ingredients is skipjack tuna and that's it. There's no other ingredients in it. So we got a bunch of this uh, in our pantry, wild sardines and water, a bunch of this stuff as well. Um, one other kind of cool thing, uh, this was new to me and my good buddy, Bill in Alaska, he's a big prepper. He's always talking about being prepared. He was familiar with this. I don't know if anyone else here has seen this stuff before. This is pure creamery butter, and it's actually oh, yeah. canned butter. So yep. it's 100% grass-fed, grass-finished canned butter in metal cans. Um, so it's, it's pretty good, too. It's it's a little bit different than the butter I get from the store, but um, we got a bunch of this, and it'll probably last forever in a can like this. So this stuff is pretty cool. One thing we're trying to do more on the homestead, my wife Jen used to do this a lot before I was carnivore, canning stuff, like glass jar canning stuff. Um, and a lot of people, well, maybe people know this, but some people don't know about canning meat. You can can meat just like you can can vegetables. You get a big pressure cooker canner kind of deal. Um, that's something I'd like to do more coming up on year two. Just like Larry, I'm, I just hit one year on carnivore. Changed my life forever, just like Larry mentioned. Lost a bunch of weight, overcame depression, anxiety. Coming up on year two now, my big priority is the Healing Humanity documentary, but looking to do some other things like uh, canning stuff and, and be more prepared. The only other thing I wanted to add was, um, Larry mentioned this as well, if you can get chickens, I think that is like the greatest prep of all time. Yep. Um, we're very fortunate. We live out in the middle of nowhere, so we can have chickens. When we lived in the city, I think we could have three. But I'll tell you what, like chickens are the best. We have chickens here and we have goats and I despise our goats. They're nothing but trouble. <laughs> they break everything and they just they're constantly get into trouble. But the chickens are great. And if you just watch the chickens for entertainment, they're always running around and they're they're doing good work. They're, they eat the ticks and insects, so they keep the bugs down. Um, but you get farm fresh eggs and there's nothing better than farm fresh eggs. If you try a farm fresh egg versus a store-bought egg, you will never want to go back. So they're pretty inexpensive as well. We've only done um, egg laying chickens so far, but that's another goal I have for this next year is to get a big flock of um, meat chickens so we can actually raise our own chickens to eat. I want to get into more of the stuff that Larry's doing. I came from the city before coming to our homestead. I've never hunted before. Um, I got my turkey license. I've got a shotgun. I've been practicing and I've got some Amish friends who are the ultimate preppers, but I'm going to probably go with them um, because I would like to hunt and get my own deer and get my own meat that way. So um, yeah, that's kind of it for me. I'm going to unmute myself there. Awesome. Thank you. And um, yeah, that's kind of my, my dream is to uh, eventually move out to the country and have space and be able to start learning how to do some of this stuff because I, I come from a small town, but, um, you know, we didn't farm or anything specifically. And so um, I, I always love hearing stories of people that kind of just take that leap and go out there and figure it out, you know, and figure out how to do all this stuff. So that that's just proof that, you know, the, the skills can be learned um, or maybe you did grow up doing it um, farming. I don't know. No, I grew up in the city. And so we named our channel Homestead How Learn With Us. But the running joke is kind of learn from our mistakes. We're just kind of fumbling through things like we got male goats, which was just a huge mistake. And um, so we're still learning as we go. I have a lot to learn still, too, but um, trying to trying to figure it out. But after eight years, we've kind of come a long way, I guess. Uh, one thing I learned is that we probably never should have grown vegetables because we tried that for a few years and failed. And maybe it was... Um, 
just meant to be. You know, we, now we have a big garden out there. But on Larry's point, I guess one other thing I'll mention real quick is we did a lot of prepping before becoming carnivore. And I've got preps, uh, like long-term storage for rice and vegetables. And like Larry, if I'm dying, maybe I'll eat vegetables again. I love how you said that. <laughs> If I'm if I'm on my last breath, maybe I'll have another vegetable. But um, I think that's what they're for. I've heard Dr. Chafee say that before. He's like, these things like vegetables, they're basically what poor people used to eat. They're survival foods. Like if you're dying, okay, you can eat them or use them for medicine or that kind of thing. So great. Yeah, I agree. Um, <clears throat> we had quite a significant pantry. Also, and I ended up when we moved here, I ended up having to donate a bunch of it just because we didn't have space for it anymore. And um, and some of it was coming up on like it needs to be eaten or, you know, probably thrown away. And so um, we did donate a bunch. And so I'm trying to rebuild. But awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right. We'll scoot over to Cami. You're next. Hello. Um, so. I. I'm having a, oh, what's it called? Where you don't think that you're good enough to be doing, talking about what you're talking about. But if I met somebody who's done all the things that I've done, I would think they were qualified, but I'm still a little bit intimidated. Um, so I, I, you know what? I think I'm actually just gonna do a little video because it's gonna be hard to show everybody. So I have curated behind me all of like the canning supplies. So I've got a, a dehydrator, a pressure cooker, a pressure canner. So I'll do a video showing all the different things, but I want to show just some things like this is a can of lard. And I went to the butcher and I just said, give me some lard, give me some pig fat. And you bring it home, you put it in your roaster, you put it, you can make, I have dozens of these jars because I have a problem with volume and I tend to buy way too much. So I have so much lard and just so many other things. Um, like, like Naya, Naya, I love homemade beef jerky. Heck yeah, me it's too. It's just ground beef <laughs> that you, you put in your gun. This is the best gun to own. Okay, the other guns are pretty good too, but this, oh, I put the wrong the wrong thing on. Uh, this is a really great gun. You just shove it full and squeeze it out and you can make so much of your own beef jerky and it's fantastic. And I take it and eat it any, everywhere when I don't wanna, when I don't wanna cook something and you just wanna grab some food. Our friends hunt and they get extra deer. And so we send it to the to the processor and we get deer bologna. And you just throw it in the freezer. There's sealers, meat grinders. There, there are tons and tons of tools and they can cost a lot of money. What we did was with all of the money that the government was sending for COVID, we, we bought all this stuff. And uh, like a friend runs a deli and they were getting rid of this meat cutter. So we, we were just acquiring things with all that money. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna show you every single thing, but there are little things that can help you out a lot. If you are, this is a chalk marker. This is wonderful for labeling your cans because it wipes right off, but stays on when you want it on and wipes off. And sometimes just being able to label something can, can make a big difference on whether you're actually going to attempt it or not. Um, so there's lots of little things. If you want to start, I would say find a bunch of jars and don't be afraid of blowing up your kitchen with the pressure canner. I think, I think Naya Na even said that she was afraid of that. It It's really, really, really not going to happen. They have so many safety devices built in and like, I haven't done it yet. That means that you probably aren't going to be able to do it because I'm terrible at, at things. <laughs> uh, so get on Craigslist and there are, there are people clearing out their jars all the time and just get some jars and try it. Just try one batch at a time. And then when, you're, when your jars are empty, start over. 
So, um, these are hamburger patties. So you kind of pre-cook these and stack them and, and can them. So I have hamburger patties ready to go that I can eat any time. I even tried it with some deer hot dogs. Okay, I admit they're terrible. They're really not that good, but I know that I can open this up and have home processed meat that you know will sustain life. This is rabbit stew. So this was done before I was carnivore. I've been carnivore for about a year and I have I've been a prepper for much longer than that. So it's just meat, onion, Carrots and potatoes. I will eat this if I'm dying. I will definitely eat this. So I don't know. I mean, I can show you every single thing that I have back there, but I'll probably just do a separate video. I just think it's easier. It's you just get online and watch some videos of, of home canners. There's a, there's a group on Facebook called Canning Rebels. They break the rules. They, they don't care what the people say is safe and they, they do different kinds of canning. They will teach you how to, you can can milk, you can can cream, you can can butter yourself at home. And there are places that where you can learn how to do all of that stuff. So I don't know, until someone has a question, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> yeah, my question was just, um, you know, do you have any resources that you recommend for people who want to learn? Like if I want to get started? Um, like any particular channels that you, you would recommend or you just kind of start searching for it? I just pick like if it's chicken, how to can chicken and I'll watch, I tend to be obsessive. So I'll watch five or six and then you'll kind of get a feel for, oh, they're saying the exact same thing. You might, if you really want to, you can watch like a test kitchen or some kind of ag department video. Um, or you just get the blue, the, the ball canning book and look it up in there or online. They have the recipes on there. It's all, I mean, for meat, anything with meat in it, it's going to be 90 minutes for a quart size jar in a pressure canner. So, I mean, that's just pretty standard. I just always do 90 minutes and then everything is covered. It just, you're just trying to kill the bacteria, but our, our immune systems do that anyway. And we're the healthiest people on the whole planet. So I don't worry about, I don't worry about botulism and, and stuff like that. I just don't. <laughs> awesome. That's good to hear. That puts some of my my fears to rest. Maybe I will <laughs> embark on the, the canning journey. Right now I'm just buying cans that other people have made. And so, um, and I like to dehydrate. That's kind of my, where I'm comfortable. Yeah. So I do a lot of dehydrating, but um, very That's cool. And story. what's your channel? Last day of um, normal. Last day of normal. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Laura, healthy carnivore. All right. Well, my name's Laura. Um, I have been a prepper for decades and decades, probably since 84. Um, I have been, I was keto for 28 years, carnivore for five, and I've been lying for one year of that. Um, so, the things that I tell people is I do implement like three day fasting uh, quite regularly. I feel like if you can get yourself kind of used to that, if you have those, you know, disparity days where you don't have food, it doesn't hit you quite as bad if you've kind of built up a tolerance to that. So that's something I recommend first off. Um, I always tell people, and I've done several videos on like cold packing meat canning butter, things like that, um, that I learned from my grandmother who did all those things. Um, but I always tell people, start with your water, get you good salts of some sort, mineral salts. Um, you know, I'm not like my kids are going to, they're adult, but they're like, we're going to have peanut butter. I'm like, that's fine. I mean, at least it's still got some fat in it. I mean, it's not what I would eat, but, um, like, like you showed, uh, Carrie, I do my own deer. I'm a hunter. So we deer hunt, we fish, uh, canned butter, and I also have canned tallow. So I do a lot of the beef tallow because I also make beef uh, tallow products. So like I do the candles that are made out of the tallow. I have 
enough lighter fluid to light up my entire little town. So, and then, um, you know, Ray was talking about pemmican and I actually make pemmican with just the salt deer and the fats. And then for people who are not able to do those kind of things, um, I did get some of the Paleo Valley sticks. They're already kind of packaged. That'll be more for giving people like neighbors and grandkids and stuff like that. I probably wouldn't eat those. Um, and I am an avid proponent of self-preservation in the form of weaponry and stuff like that. So I will be able to hunt anything that I need to and protect whatever I have to. And hopefully I don't have to get to that, but I do have that uh, availability if if that need arises. I also did um, get some of the cod liver and it's in its own oil. And I got several cans of that. Uh, let's see, what else? I have lots of health things too, which aren't really carnivore, but I, I make my own tinctures and my own oils and, and natural antibiotics. So I also have that stuff. Um, I'm a nurse of 21 years, so I'm really good at stitches and staples and things like that. So um, I would have that availability. And I, like I said, I was a prepper long before I was carnivore. So I have lots of rice and uh, coffee, sugar, um beans things like that that i will be able to barter to people uh, if they have something that i need that i don't have and they're willing to trade i have those kind of items as well so that's kind of where the majority of my stuff that i have great awesome yeah that's um that's a long time i love that and you must feel pretty confident, you know, and that's, that's what I like when I, when I feel like, you know, I'm not definitely at your level yet, but when I do have a significant pantry and I feel like, okay, I've got a lot of these boxes checked. It's like, you know, you just have that peace of mind. Like at least if I stay here, you know, I'm, we're going to be, we're going to be set for a while. So yeah. thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Okay. We'll go down to Miss Ellie. Hello everyone, my name is Ellie and I have a channel called Nourishment Redacted. I am pursuing the carnivore lifestyle. I've been a carnivore now for 331 days, so almost a year. Hey, so exciting. And um, my, thank you, and my whole family is currently eating the carnivore diet or as close as we can be. And I think that it's amazing how your life can change when you just fuel your body with the proper foods. Um, I've seen radical change in my health with keto and carnivore, with depression disappearing, knee pain going away, chronic constipation becoming normal, bowel movements, um, panic attacks are gone, my rosacea, which plagued my face for years and I hated how I looked, is now like so much more clear and I have confidence within myself. And um, I think that this is a really important topic it's important to remember not everything is naturally going to be prepared for you. Um, I think a lot of people believe supermarkets are always going to be filled. I think 2020 really opened our eyes to what happens when systems fail. And that's when my prepper mentality began. I wasn't a carnivore back then, but um, I knew that I wanted my family to be safe and that we would need to start stocking up. Now, this is not, and this is for the new people. It doesn't have to be something you do overnight. You don't clear the shelves of shelf stable items. Please don't do that. Um, think, think about others. Let it be a gradual process. Every time you go to the grocery store, pick up a few cans of tuna, some salt, beef, salmon. Check out the specialty item, specialty aisles for some um, items there, or. Uh, bone broth or chicken broth. Let this be a gradual process. And think about, do you have some food staples like canned goods already at home? And think about what you might need to replenish. So they, and also think about fat. Tallow is a great shelf stable fat source stock on your water. I don't want anyone to have this like this fear mentality. And although I think it is sometimes coupled alongside with prepping. I don't think it has to be. I think we as carnivores are a lot more calm now 
anxiety and depression and panic attacks are rare or non-existent and you can find yourself in a deep dark hole if you're not keeping yourself in check being prepared can be like really overwhelming <laughs> but if you think about it um if you think about your everyday life one full of convenience you can think about what tools you might need do you have a grill we have like a little mini butane stove and a homemade brick grill outside that we cook with stock up on batteries flashlights prepare your bug out bags if you really need to go and make sure you have supplies for your children i have a um, three and a half year old daughter and a one half year old son and i'm married and so you also you want to think about the people in your family if they have those extra special needs um, medication and all that stuff and um, i live in florida so and we have hurricane season so every year sometimes it's a party yay and sometimes like last year we went 10 days without power um i don't have one currently but i'd love to save up money and be able to acquire like a generator and a deep freezer um but to quote dr barry the best pantry is livestock and i hope that one day i'll be able to have land and have our own livestock um but if you can't do, you're not there yet a simple tip that you can do while you're cooking is to like render your own tallow from drippings from ground beef um and you know like everyone was saying in a true emergency you're, you're gonna have to eat the peasant food i'm sorry <laughs> you know the foods like you're gonna need if you're truly truly starving and let's have a grateful heart i was joking about the peasant food let's be let's have a thankful and grateful heart for those things if we were truly starving um things we have is organic wheat berries that we'll probably grind ourselves and to make bread if we need to, rice, beans, we have some canned um, and glass artichoke hearts, along with a lot of canned meat. And um, like it was mentioned earlier, having things to barter with, with people like maple syrup, coffee, um, those are great things. Um, so tough times are coming, guys. Be aware of your surroundings. Think about hygiene products, a way to protect yourself in a moment of danger, like with firearms. Get your hunting license. Be self-sufficient. And I think that if we keep our health in check, you can survive when things get tough. And I believe in you. So that's it. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, Ellie. Um, yeah, I love that. There's there's so many levels to this and there's so many er different areas to be prepared. So I feel like we could probably, you know, talk about this for days on end, you know, just a, a 48 hour live stream. Um, <laughs> and so I, I can totally identify with that where it's like you can feel really overwhelmed, especially if you're trying to get started. And you're thinking, okay, well, food is just one aspect. And then I have to think about water and, and redundancy is key here, right? So having multiple ways to purify your water or to collect water or to cook your food or reheat the food and, you know, obtain new things. And I've been guilty of kind of like, hey, let me take, you know, the credit card and run to Walmart and like buy $500 of stuff, you know, at certain points where I'm like, I'm not prepared enough. And I think this is going to happen. And and so I, I agree. Like, I think there is the way that I think about it now is, is like, yeah, anything could happen tomorrow. And, and there is a lot of fear um, circulating around us all the time. And I think some of it's, it's legitimate, you know, I think there are legitimate things that are, are potential problems. But I think a more he a healthier approach, at least for me has been to just try to do a little bit every week, like every time I go to the store, I'll pick up one or two cans. Or if I see a good deal somewhere at Sam's, I'll get an extra packet and just just slowly accumulate and slowly, you know, pick up a new skill um, here or there. And networking is the other thing that is is so important. And that's, that's really the reason why I wanted to well, one of the main reasons I wanted to do this stream in particular is because I think there is a lot of interest and, and alignment with with this preparedness mindset in the carnivore community. And so I think um, spreading this message too is um, is a great way to to help others. And so we have um, Brett, who's your carnivore here, um, left here. And, and I think Larry had to leave. So, um, and we have a lion on the side here, which is my <laughs> four year old. Little Bear's angry. Are you angry or is Little Bear angry? I'm angry. You're angry. I'm sorry to hear that. I think Little Bear's angry. Anyway, so take it away, Brett. And then we're going to open it up to questions. I've been trying to go through and, and star some questions. And then just whoever um, would like to answer, we'll kind of open it up from there. So 
take away. Brett. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name's Brett. I'm uh, my channel's called Hoosier Carnivore. I'm located in Central Indiana, uh, just uh, north of Indianapolis. Um, you know, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, be with all you fine people. Um, I like what uh, she said about levels of preparedness. Um, I have some preparedness, but probably not as high of a level as I would like. And I think a lot of us are kind of in that same uh, situation. I've got, you know, some stuff stashed back. I've got, you know, some canned uh, uh, bacon fat and beef tallow. Um, I just pulled these down off the shelf. I've got some of these 72 hour kits. I got a, a bunch of those that we got a few years ago uh, um, around the COVID time. I got a stockpile of some water and toilet paper because that went fast, didn't it? Um, that was gone quickly. But fortunately, as carnivores, we don't need as much toilet paper as as uh, other people. So we can make it go a little longer than some. But um, I think uh, probably my number one um, power to get through a short term, you know, emergency situation is my ability to fast. Um, and as carnivores, we always have that in our back pocket. Um, I mean, I, I did a 12 day fast at the first of the year. Um, and it wasn't, I mean, it was a big deal, but you know, I made it through it just fine. And I had several days where I, you know, I wasn't really even very hungry at all. Um, hopefully we, you know, if we do have an emergency situation, um, you know, none of us will have to, to fast for that long, but I know I can do it if I have to, and I can still be able-bodied and, you know, I can go out there and, and drag something home if I have to. But um, as far as my level of preparedness, I have some basics. And, you know, this 12-hour stuff, it's all carbs and garbage, but it's to keep us alive uh, until something better can come along. Um, and I think, you know, for an extended period, um, that's okay. Uh, we just Kind of have to do the best we can, but really, I, I like what a few of you have said about bartering. Um, on top of food, I also have, you know, I have firearms, I have extra ammunition, I have um, silver coins, uh, which are also great. You know, if the money system collapses, gold and silver have never been worth nothing, so. In that uh, scenario, uh, you can pretty much rely on being able to use precious metals for for trading, and that's something you can do too. You don't have to run right out to your local coin shop and and buy up a bunch of silver. Just go and every now and then run over there and buy fifty bucks worth of silver dimes or silver quarters or silver dollars or whatever, and just you know have that on hand just in case um, the price of silver, you know, and precious metals keeps going up. So it's actually not a bad thing to have. Um, and, you know, if you're the kind of person who isn't a fan of firearms, not everyone, not everyone is, but as long as you're a legal citizen and have no criminal record for 200, $250, you can go, to Walmart and buy a 22 rifle that you could use to hunt rabbits and squirrels and small game. And you, heck, you could even take down a deer with it with a 22 rifle. Um, and unless you're, you know, have a criminal record or don't, you know, not able to own a firearm, um, I think it's a good idea to have one. It doesn't mean you have to use it or parade around the neighborhood with it or anything, but to have it, uh, stashed away is, uh, I think a good idea. So, uh, that's about all I've got for prepping. I, I basically here cause I want to learn more. Um, I've got a dehydrator coming. Uh, I'm, uh, going to order the one that, uh, that Nia uh, is using to make, uh, her dehydrated beef. Uh, that looks really good. 
I'm going to get one of those and, uh, um, you know, some more, some more, uh, back stock. And, uh, I think it's good too, to, to learn homesteading, um, to learn how to, you know, raise chickens if you're able to do that and have those kind of things. So yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of where, where I'm at. So I'm kind of one of those in, be in betweeners. I'm prepared, but not probably as prepared as I should be. That's great. And I love that you bring up fasting and our ability to do that. I think that's mm -hmm. such a great point because, and this, this kind of parallels into something that uh, I think I made a, a short or something. I don't really do shorts anymore, but in the very beginning of my, you know, documenting carnivore on here, I talked about addictions, you know, and in that context, it's like, what are you addicted to? You know, are you addicted to coffee? Are you addicted to alcohol? Are you addicted to cigarettes? Are you addicted, you know, whatever we're addicted to that plays a role in this whole being prepared thing too. Like what if you don't have access to that stuff anymore? What if you're addicted to this junk food, all this processed, you know, eating tons of snacks every day and six small meals and you know you can't go 12 hours without eating that mm -hmm. you know that can put your life at risk in a in a situation where you know you need to be able to think and make decisions and have a clear head and you know go for a few days with possibly without eating and so um i think that's that's something that you know is is such a an an, um, an ancestrally appropriate mindset too it's like hey if i if I can't get access to food for two, three days, I'm not going to, you know, it might suck, but I'm not going to perish, you know, or I'm still going to be able to function well enough to take care of my kids, you know, and, and obviously keep going on until something else changes. So um, we got some questions here. So thanks everybody. That was, that was all great input. And I, I love that we have some different perspectives and different skill sets. Um, we can all learn from each other and, Let's open it up to some questions here. So I have a few started a, here. So the, go ahead. I have a quick question. Uh, how do you can those burger patties? It looked awesome. How do I can them? You just yeah. pre-cook them about 75% of the way done. And then you put them in the can and then you put them in the pressure canner for 90 minutes. And they're, they're it looked like we had a fat cap of tallow on top of that. Yeah, I use pretty fatty mm -hmm. meat. I technically you should probably skim a lot of that off. Maybe, maybe even let it cool down, mm -hmm. let it harden, take that off, and then can it. But my jar's all sealed except one, so I didn't worry about it. Awesome. But Thank you for I, that. I do have a comment about this question. Um you should rotate them if you can. Uh, yep. So I, in order to force myself to rotate, because as a prepper, as a, as a canner, you just want to keep accumulating things and just, mm -hmm. just keep getting more and more. And, and in order to force myself to use them, I do a pantry challenge every year. So for January, February, and March, the goal is to not shop at the store and to only eat out of my food stores. So out of the freezer, mm -hmm. off of the shelf, that way you are you are forcing yourself to use it and, and get through it and find out what you like, what you don't like, what you're not going to can anymore, what you will need to can more of. And I ran out of hamburger, so I know I don't have enough hamburger on hand to go the full three months. So you, you learn so much by doing that. And also somebody, uh, Nancy, made a comment like, I'm just going to walk down to the store. You know, she's not worried that the stores will ever run out of food. Which mm. may it may never happen, but for us, I went from spending a thousand dollars on groceries. Sometimes we do we spend that much for just a family of three. Um, but in January, we spent seventy dollars on groceries because we were not shopping and rotating through our supplies. In February, we spent eighty four dollars, and then we've kind of fallen apart in March, and we have spent about five hundred dollars on groceries, but. You can save a ton of money by using what you've already prepped when you bought it on sale and you bought it in bulk and you canned it yourself and it's healthier. There's just so many reasons to do it. Even if the stores have all the food you are ever going to need, you may lose your job or something like that, but definitely rotate your stuff. And if you have to force yourself, do a challenge every year. 
Great. Yeah. Does anyone else have a comment on this? Uh, rotating canned foods with newer bought products from Karen. Yeah, I'll just... I do that. Oh, sorry. I do oh, that every three months um, with mine because I can all year long. Um, like she said, anytime there's a sale like brisket, I will get that. I will cut that up. Now, I was trained to actually add fat in because tallow is very good at keeping the bacteria count down. So I never remove any of that fat from the, the food, the jars, um, and leave that in there. But I, I do it every three months. I have OCD, so it's no problem for me to come in here and do that. That just kind of helps me get rid of some of that. But that's something that I do. Yeah, I was going to say, um, when we were canning more so vegetables back in the day, but we would only purchase stuff that we were going to end up eating. So we would always try to rotate through it and, oh, we're a little bit low on corn. So we would buy more of that. Or I guess now it would be tuna like that. So we weren't just trying to just keep building up and building up. So stuff would be sitting there potentially for years. So that was something that we would try to do is make sure it was, it was stuff that we'd actually be consuming regularly. Awesome. Anyone else on this topic or this question? I mean, yeah, rotating through stuff's important. I've rotated through my water supply a couple of times mm -hmm. um, because water will kind of go stale. Um, but, uh, you know, watch those. Uh, uh, if you have a, a rack uh, like she has behind her, you know, and you have food on it, you know, make sure you put the dates that it expires easily visible. So uh, you can go through those and, and cycle out some of the older stuff. So, and I'm going to try the canning the uh, hamburger patties. That's awesome. How long do those last, do you think? I think everything lasts longer than you think and that we should trust our nose, trust our senses. Yep. And, and if it smells and looks okay, go ahead and eat it. It may lose nutrients over a year, but I know – I know people eat them years and years and years later. Hmm. That's great. Thank yeah, you. I actually just had some uh, deer meat from 10 years ago that we cold packed. Um, and I do pints and quarts because um, sometimes my husband still eats carbs. So he'll like to like do deer and noodles and stuff like that. And it was 10 years old and it was fine. And it may have had less nutrients. I don't know, but he said it tasted just like it had been canned, you know, this year. So he was pretty pleased with that. Awesome. Thanks everyone. I was going to show uh, Brett really quick. Oh, go ahead. When you are going to pack, if you use a wide mouth jar, use a wide mouth lid, pack your raw meat, in here to make your patty then you can just slip this out peel your patty off and then you know that that burger will fit exactly into your jar otherwise you're going to have all kinds of trouble trying to load that in there cool yeah i i saw a couple comments coming through saying uh people would be interested in seeing a video on that uh when you mentioned you could make a video about it so um Definitely a good idea. So next question is from Cheryl. And she says, what do you think about keeping water in unused canning jars for emergency water supply? Good question. If they're empty, fill them. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. I'm like, I don't know. I don't have any canning specific jars, um, but I will save glass jars. I will oftentimes buy things just for the jar. So like, um, my fiance eats like kimchi and some other things like and we get these ki kimchi in these big giant glass jars um it has a plastic lid but you know i keep that jar and then i'm like oh i could i mean i couldn't can with it but you know it's it's a good storage container for something like water i would i would say but hmm. this is an old pickle think. jar and i did can in it and I used the old pickle jar lid and it sealed and I'm shocked, but it totally worked. You can, mm. you can, can in almost anything, but yeah, I have so many empty jars and I don't have anything that I really need to can right now. So sure. Do a whole bunch of water and, and until you need the jar, fill them up with water. Absolutely. 
I would say keeping water in a canning jar. I mean, it's better to have some than none, but it's not going to be nearly enough water unless you have like, you know, 300 jars. Uh, you're going to need a lot more water than that. So I would, you know, maybe consider getting rain barrels. Um, those are great for collecting water uh, and just, you know, buy the sealed like three gallon things of water and just buy one every week and start stacking them up. Yeah. One thing that we do is my husband, he made a, we call it bucket water. It's basically two buckets on top of each other and we have ceramic water filters inside of it. And those last for like ever. So definitely if you can, you can make your own water filtration system. So yep. that's also helpful too. Yeah. We, we have, have um, a system. Yeah, as you say, we have the we have the big birdie water filter. I don't know if you guys have seen those. Oh, those yeah. are pretty good. You can mm -hmm. put, like puddle water through those basically. But we do rain catchment too, just in case um, rain barrels. And we have like a big IBC tote. But um, having a filter is a really good prep just in case because, like Brett said, you go through water much quicker than I think most people realize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, rainwater catch you know barrels, and then we have a cistern. Also, and then I have actually canned water. So I do it for 45 minutes in the jars. And I probably have a thousand of those that Ooh. I've saved up. Um, and I actually put some of the um, Redmond's real salt, not enough to make it like Soleil water, but to put that in there because if you're in trouble, you could live with just the water with that salt for a long time uh, mm -hmm. versus, you know, food. So I actually did that in all of those jars when I canned. I go through so much LP, the RLP tank people, because we live in a small community. I really think they were like looking at me and I was like, I do not make meth. Like, look at my skin because we go through so much of it. I'm like, I can and coal pack everything. And they're like, sure, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny yeah water is um you'll be surprised how much you go through like we we lived off grid for 18 months only in a a converted school bus that was converted into an rv and so like not a not a normal size house with regular plumbing it was just i was just hauling water in seven gallon um aquatainers and that yeah that'll teach you about preserving water, being mindful of like how much you use when you wash your hands, brush your teeth, all that kind of stuff. Cause every drop counts and you got to dispose of the stuff properly, you know, in the right way that, that you, that's gray water or, you know, black water in some cases. Um, so yeah, water is super important. We could probably do a whole, whole stream on just water. Um, okay. This, I just thought stood out to me. <laughs> Wow, thank you all for all this ex excellent info. Thank you all for doing what you're doing and sharing. Thank you. Um, Carrie says, any tips for cleanup of dehydrating trays? I don't find mine difficult to clean, but mine are plastic. So, you know, there, there are pros and cons to that. But, um, and I when I do meat, I don't feel like they really get that dirty, to be honest. Like they kind of separate from from the trays so um but i know there's some like metal metal mesh trays right that maybe that's what you're talking about anyone i would use just like a good bristle brush we have like a we have a brush by our sink that's got like the soap in the handle and that seems to work really good i think on probably on those dehydrating trays that got the little perforations and holes in them Maybe soak them and use a brush is probably what I would do. Honestly, I would ask my wife to help me with it, but that's if I was left alone, I'd probably go with that the brush. Yep. Anyone else? <clears throat> I have a hard time washing mine, but it's because my sink isn't big enough and I can't put the whole tray in the sink. Uh, and so it's like this nightmare mm. of balancing. I just use a ton of hot water and soap, but it's the size of my sink that's the problem. So I thought about the bathtub and then I immediately dismissed that idea. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to like sanitize the bathtub first and then fill it and then <laughs> that would be a lot. Okay. Um, 
Carvola says, where do you start when you have zero money to prep? I have a good one for this. So when I first started out uh, prepping, uh, I was actually in high school. And the reason I prepped so young is my grandmother went through, um, her family came through Germany and then uh, to move over with her, but she grew up on a farm during the uh, depression. And so she was a big time prepper. So that's why it was just in my blood that young. But when people would say, what do you want for Christmas? I was like, cast iron pots and pans, uh, ball mm -hmm. jars, lids. I have lids and rings probably for all of us on this show for 10 years. <laughs> and they're the good ones. They're not the ones that we had, people had to buy during the COVID thing when you couldn't find anything. Um, so when people are asking you what you want for your birthday, say, you know, either a gift card and go buy some of this stuff yourself or give them a list. This is some things I would like to have and have them buy those for you um, would be a good thing. And sometimes you can go to food pantries and you'll find that people are starting to give like canned meats and stuff. I saw Dr. Barry and his wife did a, a thing on that. So I would also check in those places. Very I cool. would say my tip for that would be just to start small, start saving your bacon grease, start saving your uh, beef tallow. At, if you fry up hamburger, say, start saving some mm -hmm. of the fat from that and just, just start small. Hit garage sales. You can find canning jars and things at garage sales for cheap and uh, just, you know, start small. Yeah, I would say um, if you literally have no money, start with prepping with your skills. Like what can you learn? Um, maybe you can learn about canning more. You can do research or learn about hunting or maybe you could go fishing, things like that. But maybe start yeah. prepping with your skills first. Yes. And there's another way to prep that we haven't mentioned, and that is financially. I, I've been listening to Dave Ramsey like crazy for the past couple of weeks. Start there. Get a budget. Get another job. Like, I, I don't, you know, obviously I don't know your situation. You may have zero money, but... You may have more access to money than you than you realize. Don't forget to prep financially, <laughs> and don't go into debt for your preps. Don't don't do that. That's not a good idea. That's yeah, I've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I was also going to say just just to wrap it up. Um, rely on your community. If you are involved in a church, I know that there are a lot of people who are willing to help those who are in need. And don't be afraid to ask for help because you might be surprised you might be a helping guiding hand for you. So I hope I hope you figure it out. And uh, just and if you're religious, pray on it. It'll come to you. Yes, I have a young neighbor and I love and adore her and she wants to learn to can. And so when I have a big canning day, I would happily have her come over. I'll give her five jars for helping me can 40 jars. Right. That's a definite good payoff for me and for her. So build a community of preppers. We're generous people because we have supplies. <laughs> we're comfortable. We're okay. <laughs> right. I love all that. And I think too, from if you're feeling overwhelmed about getting started or you're thinking, you know, I'll never be able to afford all this stuff. I'll never be ready that's where community really comes in, right? Because you you might not be able to have every single skill set, or you might get injured in a situation and not be able to perform some of the skills that you do have, or, you know, do the things that you, you know, anything could happen. And so I think finding like-minded people, you know, as locally as we can and getting to know, you know, our farmers, if you have an Amish community, I think, uh, Cammie, you were mentioning that in the beginning, like, you know, if you've got anybody who is knowledgeable that you can learn from. Um, you know, we just found a, a farmer that we're getting some raw dairy from. It's like, I'm just trying to start getting my feelers out and find like, okay, where are these communities in my area? So that even though I live in the city right now, um, I can start to make some of these connections, maybe go out and visit a farm where, you know, there's regenerative ranching or something going on or some, or support, um, kind of like you're saying too, like maybe try to help somebody else out. Or I've seen even in different places I've lived at like the tech school or the college or a, a church will have just like a free 
canning class or something that you can just show up at and learn something and and it might be you know donate something to to come in or it might be I've seen free ones too so it's just kind of getting into that mindset and then I, I find when you when you start to think about this stuff the doors kind of open for you and, and you find people and you find resources and things just happen that's how our our whole bus thing happened I was like there I don't know how to do any of this I've never built anything like this like there's no way and I don't know how to drive this thing, you know, and but it was just like I set that intention and then the doors just opened and people came to, to help me and made it happen. So, um, yeah, that's great. Well, I know we're we just hit the hour. So if anyone needs to bolt here, now is your opportunity. Um, but we do have a few more questions. If anyone can stick around, um, I can yeah. probably hang out for another 15, 20 minutes. Everybody good with that? OK. Yeah. Cool. Um, these hours go by so fast. And so I'm always like, whoa, wait, it's seven o'clock. Well, seven o'clock for me here. Boopers. Um, so next question is from Jasmine. How long do canned goods from the store actually last? It's a good question. I don't know if I have an answer on that other than I think probably much longer than most people would think. I like Cammie's answer earlier. If you open it up and kind of do the smell test, you can kind of get a good idea, but um, probably a lot longer, especially if it's in a metal can and there's no dents or anything like that. And it, it's probably good for longer than you think. I just looked it up because I don't know the answer, but I want to give them something to work off of. It says that um, canned food from the store has a shelf life of two to five years for low acid canned foods, while high mm -hmm. acid foods have a shelf life of 12 to 18 months. Hmm. Pretty cool. <laughs> I'd say some of the like... um, longevity of the storage is where you store it. So if you have a, a basement uh, that stays fairly cool year round, it's going to last a little longer down there than it will, say, in a pantry that's 85 degrees, you know, part of the year. So, but it, it will last longer than the date that's on the can. Um, but yeah, I think when it starts, when I have rotated stuff, I usually will try to rotate it out by the time it hits the expiration date, just as a, a basic guideline. Agreed. That's kind of, we talked about rotating things and, um, you know, also I think that's probably a good idea. I know I have cans that are more than two years old, probably three plus years in some cases, just ones that I bought from the grocery store. So I don't know, I guess we'll find out when we, if we ever open them. Um, so I should probably do a better job of rotating some of that in, but they're not all carnivore stuff. So they're kind of like the things that like green beans or peas or something that I would save for those emergency times. If hopefully that never happens, but okay. Um, Drax of the North. I'm three months carnivore and I've recently added fermented raw vegetables such as sauerkraut to my meals as per Dr. Sean Amara. I've had, it's had, it's had great digestion benefits. Thoughts on that? Hmm. I mean, I actually I also to... make, yeah, I make fermented um, cabbage and carrots and I actually, you can keep it the way I was shown is that you can keep it for um, nine months and so I do it in my prep room and then I do put it in the fridge, but you could put it in a basement, dark place, someplace that's cool um, and keep it for up to that time. But I do think some people, um, I do not digest any vegetables at all nicely. So I really would have to be dying to do it. But I do think there are people like my husband, it really does help kind of reset his bacteria in his stomach if it gets out of kilter. I haven't had that happen since I went carnivore. So, but I think it would be okay for uh, some people. I'm the same way. I can't tolerate any of that um, at this point. So, but I might keep some kimchi or something like that for, for Ben. Cause he loves that and pickles and him and, and the little one love pickles. Anyone else? I'd say if you're, if you're able to handle it, and you're still achieving your goals and you're healthy, um, then yeah, having some raw 
fermented vegetable, I think is, is fine. Uh, for me, I just eat beef and meat and butter and eggs and I have no digestive issues at all. So, you know, if you're able to handle it and still, you know, have good labs and you're, you're achieving your goals and you're happy and healthy, then, uh, yeah, go for it. Awesome. I think this is the last uh, official question we have. Anyone canning eggs from Bill Cook? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> These are canned eggs. So you just scramble them. I threw some uh, meat in here and canned it for 90 minutes. Uh, well, this one is 75 because it's a smaller jar. And these are, this is fantastic. It looks gross, but this is really, really yummy. And you can eat it cold. I use, I take these in the car. I'll take them. We, we have passes to Kings Island this summer. I'll take these to Kings Island and these are a fantastic meal. So canned eggs, I think with a little bit of water and you do it just a little bit, they puff up a ton and they'll just blow up your jars. But I, Laura, have you done eggs like that? I have not done that, but I did do some water glassing with my daughter because she has chickens and quail and everything. So we did do that. And she's done that to where I think it's a year that you can still use those. I'm not sure about the time frame after that, but I'm going to try that uh, that you just did. I'm like, OK, because I love I do egg yolks. I don't do egg whites because of the histamine, but I will definitely be mixing that up and I will do that soon. It's so good. Yeah, I do the water glassing too. And I love that. And I've used them for like 18 months. I know it can go even longer. But for me, I did it in a five gallon bucket, which is humongous. And I found that yeah. that's too much weight on the bottom eggs and they started crushing. And it wasn't, it's not a see through container. So you can't look in mm -hmm. and tell that an egg has popped or that there's something going on. So I like using the big pickle jars now or big canning jars because they're smaller, they're see-through, you're not going to have as much breakage and you're going to be able to see what's going on in the jar and really keep track of it. So those yeah. eggs are scrambled and there's some meat in there too. So that's basically a power bowl in a jar. Yeah, it's it's can a canned breakfast egg thing. It's it's wonderful. And you can do what however you want, bacon, sausage, hamburger, Wow. Ham, whatever. Three, that's right up totally, our alley. Totally I know that's really cool. Yeah, power bowl in a jar. I'm I'm all about it. Hey, Cammy, just one follow up question. So you said the eggs taste better canned. What about other meats? Like if you do a roast or things like that, the texture, the tenderness, does it taste different or better for you when you're canning it? Like a tough meat, like a roast, I like that better canned. Hamburger kind of changes flavor, and it's not my favorite. But hmm. like roast is really good. Like mm. that rabbit stew and that beef stew I have back there, those are delicious. Mm. Hamburger, not so much. I like chicken canned. I like it even like I like it really well canned. It just falls apart like like tuna fish. It just mm. shreds. But not not all meat translates well. Hot dogs do not translate well. Right. <laughs> I am uh, I'm dehydrating eggs right now. I'm experimenting with that. I just made some. Just the egg whites I did um, and then ground them up a little bit into because I wanted to see if I could make instead of purchasing like the egg white flour that is in some of like the carnivore breads and things that I want to try to make for my little one. And, you know, the, it's kind of expensive. And I just thought, oh, I'm addicted to my dehydrator. Why don't I just try this? And then so I was reading a little bit about that. And you can, you know, you can do cooked scrambled eggs and then dehydrate them. Um, which I think I'm going to try next because I just did the raw whites and the, I just use it in a recipe and it it worked just fine. So um, I might try the dehydrator thing. And then when I get into this canning thing, I'll, I'll try that too because that sounds really good. We eat, we go through a lot of eggs. The I don't eat eggs personally. I'm on the lion diet now too. Um, but the the little kid, the kiddo loves eggs and, and Ben eats like three, four eggs every morning. So that would definitely be something to stock up on. The other thing, like pickled eggs is another thing that I actually liked. Um, I you know it doesn't agree with my digestion, but I feel like that'd be something maybe some people could tolerate pickled eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really or good. Pickled herring. <laughs> 
So I have a suggestion if you want to try canning and you're terrified of it, they have these little like Nesco electric canners. They're just, they kind of look like an instant. If you're just experimenting is probably going to be plenty. They're expensive. They're like 200 something dollars. But like if you've got a kid going away to college, if you've got, you know, a new a married couple that you want to get a nice gift for, or you just want to experiment, these little electric canners, you do not have to babysit them. You just program it in and you walk away. I don't have one, but I see people online doing them. And I think it would be a great idea. You send your college student to college with some jars. You know, they go to the store, buy a few things. They can make healthy meals that they can cook instantly. I think it could save them and help them be nutritionally healthy, you know, away from home and be able to handle their own, their own food. But, and, and if you're scared, I think it's a really good baby step into, into pressure canning. Huh. I'll have to check that out. And I'm, I'm curious too, because a lot of times the appliances I buy now, I'm like, oh, could I run these off my solar generator if I had to? And so I think like my, the max appliance I can run for any length of time is like 1800 Watts. So I try to stick, you know, so that's the first thought in this, in this realm of thinking that pops into my mind is like, versus like Laura, what you're saying with the, you know, going through a lot of uh, propane and stuff, just having that flexibility with different energy sources that you could use potentially in an off grid or a power, you know, grid down situation. Um, but that's not really relevant to the, con. I just thought of that. Cause I'm like, Oh, I wonder how many Watts it is. Could I run that off my thing? Um, we got one more question here. Uh, Emotional support paintbrush says, can y'all do another one of these for travel and road tips? Well, certainly we could do it next week if you want, because I don't have a topic for next week yet. So we could do, um, yeah, travel and to go food trips um, or tips for trips. And Junior, then the final question, go ahead. Car bacon. Yeah. <laughs> car bacon. I like to say hashtag purse bacon. Right. Purse bacon. <laughs> Backpack mm -hmm. bacon, purse bacon, car bacon. <laughs> I replace that with jerky <laughs> now. So it's like the jerky bag comes with me everywhere. Um, so our final question is from we've got a lot of carries here today. <laughs> this is the I think the second or third carry. Um, how about using iodine to make sure your water is clean from bacteria and parasites? Anyone have a comment on that? Yeah, you could add, um, I would do like a drop to like a, a pint. Like if you do the Lugals, like that's the kind I use just for myself. I think, yeah, I saw, yep, yep. So you could do that. Um, I also have like the water purifying tablets that you can get if you wanted to do something. And then I also have like the filter straws. I have a ton of those that I bought up for our household and then both of my adult children for their households. So you could have that as well. But yes, you could do that. Anybody else on that one? Yeah. Okay. Well, we are about 15 minutes over time. I think that was all the, the questions we had. So I want to thank everybody um, for being here. That, that really means a lot. And that we were all able to, that, you know, we got to hear from all of you about your thoughts and tips. And I think it was a really valuable conversation. I learned something from everybody, I think. And uh, just scrolling through the chat, I think, you know, there's also a lot of good, a lot of good tips here. So hopefully this is a great resource for anybody who is, um, you know, maybe have been doing preparations for a while, but want to, you know, wanted to focus more on meat based things. Um, or is just kind of curious about getting started with preparedness. So I think, um, I'd, you know, I'd love to have any and all of you back um, for uh, a potential uh, or the next week's live stream or any in the future. And anyone have any final comments before we before we close out? I was just going to say thanks for doing this. This is a great topic and really, really interesting. So thanks for putting it together. And go check out Nia's channel. She just put up a video today about this very topic. Uh, it was a really great video. I really enjoyed watching it. And she also has a video she put out a few days ago about making the pemmican bars, which I'm definitely going to do soon. I'm going to give that a give that a try. 
you know, and just get out there and be prepared. You know, we all can't have, you know, a meat locker <laughs> full of meat right. behind us here. You know, I'm, I was going to say that. What is prepper, it? The ultimate carnivore prepper here, you know, I'm going to his house. <laughs> <laughs> was that yeah, like two, two days going. worth of, two days worth of meat back there? What do we got? <laughs> Yeah, well, if I have to feed you and your crew, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's so funny. I saw comments like that. I was sure to hold my laughter the whole time. It's so good. Yeah, <laughs> I guess the only thing I could say is remember to keep your mental health in check and don't worry so much. Like every day you think about it, if there's something you can do, try to do it. But we don't want to, you know, if, if you're the foundation of your home, like say you're a parent, and you have young kids, or maybe you're taking care of an elderly parent, remember that you have to take care of yourself first so that you can provide to others. And um, thanks for having me on the stream as always. I love hanging out with all of you. Awesome. Anybody else? Thank you uh, for having me on too. I yeah, enjoyed I'm, I'm just going to close by saying, uh, oh, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. You're all right. Okay. Uh, mine's cutting in and out. So I wasn't sure if I was alone. Um, I just want to close by saying prepping is wonderful, but prepping alone will never save you because you never know what's going to go wrong. You, you can't prep for everything. So for me, it's always rely upon my higher power, which is God. I don't know what other people's uh, religious affiliations are, but that's that's the true source of preparation and strength is right there and listen to him to tell you what you need to work on individually. Laura. <clears throat> um, so I just want to say thanks for having me on. I, I love prepping. I love, I have done some classes with some nurses in 2008, right before the house bubble thing happened. They used to make fun of me and called me kind of like hillbilly because of what I do, of you know, hunting and all that stuff. Um, but after 2008, they came to me and were like, would you do a canning class? And I did that. So I would say if you're scared about that, look in your communities, put things out on Facebook and see if there are people doing it because I did it for free. You know, it was like. I want other people to have this information so that they can be self-sustainable as long as possible. Um, because it's it's not hard, but it is something that you have to to acquire some learning to do it. But it, it's very safe. Um, like she said earlier, these containers to to do like your pressure canning, they are so much safer than they were back in the day. And I have been doing it since 84 and I've never had one blow up. I don't bother it. As soon as I shut it off, I walk away and leave it. And I come back an hour and a half later and then I take it apart. But I think that's it is just, just to be safe, but go out there and find your community. Awesome. Did we get, did everyone get a chance? Yeah, I think so. Um, well, great. Thank you all so much for being here. I really appreciate your time um, and taking time to share and answer questions. And I will link everyone's channel um, handles in the description. I am i didn't do it beforehand, so I apologize. Um, but for everybody watching the, the live here tonight, thank you for being here. And also anyone watching the replay, of course, thank you also for your viewership. And uh, please go subscribe to everyone's channel and, and let's build this community up. Um, and, you know, local community is is obviously a great thing too but getting this message out and supporting each other online is also amazing it makes us feel less alone so um great stream tonight thanks everybody All right.